Hi friends, thank you so much for coming here this morning. It is early, I am a theater person. Morning, like nothing happens before noon. So I would absolutely still be asleep right now. So thanks a lot for the coffee again. And thank you guys so much for waking up early and starting up your Friday um, at our new year in 2019 um, with something surreal and strange and weird. Um, but I welcome you guys and I honor you for coming here and I'm so grateful to be here. Um, I really think that creative mornings can be a driving force to make change. I honestly had not been aware of them that long. Um, only in the last few months did I hear about this. And then when I researched into like how it started and how it's you know all over the world um, in cities, you know, Sweden and Norway and Canada and London and all in non-English speaking countries. I just think it's an amazing thing. The relationships and the opportunity we have here to build relationships with each other um, are really like planting the seeds for growth that I think can help really to make change in the world. Um, I don't want to just talk at you guys today for a long, you know, blah, 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 blah. So I'm going to ask for a little bit of interactivity and have some questions um, and hopefully you guys can come up with some answers and we'll talk back and forth a little bit. Um, who am I? Why am I here? Um, uh, like she said, I'm the artistic director of 19th Century Hound, which uh, just collaborated with Factory Obscura. Kelsey is here from Factory Obscura. There she is in the middle. Um, we could not have asked for better collaborators for one of our first, um, our first, uh, ventures out. We've done some film before, but this was our first live theater event. I've done a lot of theater and stuff on my own. I work for Lyric Theater as my day job here in the city, but um, really trying to dive in and do some immersive, something new and stuff that the that Oklahoma City hasn't seen yet. Some of my favorite theater going experiences that I've participated in as an audience member and as an actor have been the things that sort of broke that fourth wall and um, really invited the audience to be a part of the experience. So I invite you guys today to be a part of the experience as well um, and to um, participate together. Um, Mel and Andrea thought that I would be a good fit based on uh, our show there because if any, the three of you back in the back I know who saw it um, know that it was kind of weird and surreal and cool and that was totally based on the amazing artistry that Factory Obscura provided us with. We devised the piece um, based on the art around that they created. So I, I was telling people it's like we wrote a show based on a set design in which we had no input. Um, they created this amazing, beautiful, artistic world and uh, me and my writer in the room and our company of actors, we all came in and responded to it. Um, so response, I think, is a big part of Surreal and like how do you as an audience member um, whether that's with a piece of art or a piece of writing as an audience member or simply, you know, looking at an advertisement in the Gazette as an audience member, what is your response? And I think there's a lot to be said for like the interactivity in the world around us. As we get so connected to these devices, I think we have lost some of like the human connection and interactivity. There it goes. Um, so I really think that we can dig deep and dive into that a little bit. Um, I'll talk a little bit more about like the aspect of Surreal and how we put it together with our show a little bit later. Um, but I want to talk about Surreal because I didn't pick this theme. This is like the theme for Creative Mornings all across the world. I actually just watched the Vancouver talk. They posted that on the Creative Mornings um, video and um, he was an amazing visual artist and showed some of his paintings and it was really cool. So, but when Mel and Andrea asked me to do this, they thought I would be a good fit for the theme, but I didn't know really anything about it. Um, so I had to do some research um, about to what Surreal is. So because I'm the biggest nerd in the world, I immediately fell down like the Wikipedia dictionary hole of um, figuring out like, okay, what does this word even mean? So uh, we uh, start off with the actual word Surreal. Um, it is an adjective. There we go. Um, it actually was never used as a word until um, surrealism as an uh, art movement in the 20s in Paris and France and other parts of Europe started. So it wasn't a word that they were like, oh, we like that word, we're going to do something. It was first, I, I'm terrible at French, but like surreal, it was used in like the program notes for a ballet that um, Pablo Picasso designed the costumes for. And a famous choreographer that I'm sure the dancers of the room would be Shot, mad at me that I don't know his name, but a famous ballet dancer did the choreography. It was this revolutionary ballet in Paris, and in the program notes, they first used the word surreal. Um, and from that, uh, surrealism uh, was born, and we'll talk more about that later. So, um, uh, one of the definitions is marked by the intense irrational reality of a dream. Um, and surrealism has gone on to influence art in so many ways now. Um, some, I love some of the um, 
the synonyms, again, I'm the nerd, I like the words. Um, unbelievable, fantastic, bizarre, unearthly, uncanny, dreamlike, phantasmagorical. Anytime you use the word phantasmagorical, you've gotta put it in there. Um, so because the word didn't actually really exist, it was kind of made up, I had to go a little bit deeper and break it down. So the prefix itself, sir, is used in the senses of super, meaning over, above, or on top of, or in addition to. So making something more. So uh, more real. Um, I liked the definitions of like not artificial, occurring or existing in actuality, capable of being detected. Um, so in our art, what, how are we um, making something that's not artificial or really something that people can detect? Um, and the, some of the synonyms, genuine, authentic, certain, honest, legitimate, original, palpable, positive, sincere, and undeniable. So bringing the sir, the super, the more, how can you be more positive? How can you be over the top honest with your art? What are, what are the things that you can do to dig a little bit deeper and bring it out a little bit more? And those are some of the things I thought we would talk about. Um, one of the uh, uh, main artists of um, surrealism uh, was a guy named Max Ernst. Max Ernst. Um, and this is one of his paintings that is uh, one of the more famous ones. I really love this quote, creativity is that marvelous capacity to grasp mutually distinct realities and draw a spark from their juxtaposition. So taking things that don't seem to go together and like have a conflicting point of view can sometimes make something even more fantastical and amazing. Um, surrealism was a reaction to World War I, really. Uh, all, after all the horrors of the war that came out, um, they really started to, no, yes, I'll keep talking. Um, they really started to thought that all of the rational thought that came then made war, they were like, well, if that's what rational thought gives us, we're gonna just reject that. We're gonna do something totally irrational and take things that don't have any, make any sense and do something that really like pulls our audience in and just takes out all that rational thought. Because if rational thought gives us war and like killing and famine and all those type of things, let's try something irrational. Um, I promise today won't be a history lesson, um, but we gotta know sort of where we came from and what the themes are to know then where we can go and how we can take it forward. Um, so Andre Baton is considered the father of surrealism and he's the one that wrote those liner notes in that program. Um, and there, uh, Salvador Dali is a famous, he did those melting clocks. We'll see more of those later. My friend Alex has one of these on his bookshelf and I was like, well, I have to steal that and use it in my talk. Um, but they were very much influenced by Freud, Sigmund Freud, um, and that, the psychology of that time, uh, which, uh, we as you know, psychologists have moved on a little bit perhaps, but um, you really using the foundations of a lot of those things. But one of their big um, goals was digging in into the pathway of, to the subconscious um, and really try to uncovering your unconscious desires, the things that we want that we don't even know that we want, right? The things that are deep down within us that we might have uh, shove back, thought weren't realistic enough, thought that like, well, I'm never gonna be able to do that, so I'm just not even gonna think about it anymore, or the things that are even down deeper. Um, and that's why so much of their paintings were about taking objects that seem to just totally clash with one another and bring it out. So yes, it was about like their art and their writing. Andre Breton was an artist, but he was also a, um, a, a poet and a, a novelist. Um, so they use these tools to spur social change. They were all about the social revolution in this 20s, the war, is, the war is over, they're in this exciting time. If you've seen like Midnight in Paris or any of those movies, like Paris was the most exciting time to be there and be alive with all these other artists around them. They wanted to spur on the social revolution. So that's what surrealism was really about, was to make change in the world around you. Um, so like I said, this isn't gonna be a history lesson. How are we making change today? How are you changing the world? That's what I thought when I was looking at this. I was like, well, that's overwhelming. Like, I, that's terrifying. I can't change the world. I'm like sitting here in like an office. Uh, mostly what I do to make most of my money with Lyric is uh, teach singing to little like 10 year old girls. Like that's how I make my living the majority of the time. So am I really changing the world? Being like na 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 na. Like what is that really doing? Um, but then I realized that like what I sort of said before that the um, the, the seeds of relationship, the ones that are built here, that is how the world has changed. It's like one seed at a time, a small 
Small, insig seemingly insignificant choices are the things that add up and make change throughout the world. So that's what the Surrealists were about, is making change. Um, but we need tools to do that. Like, we can just sort of like sit around and not know what we're doing. Um, so under Baton, this is a painting of his, and I really liked um, something that they do a lot in Surrealism was automatism. And this is something that says, psychic automatism in its pure state by which one proposes to express the actual functioning of thought. So get down to like, we have these thoughts, and I don't know if you're like me, the jumbled mess in our head that's, you know, I couldn't fall asleep last night because I'm thinking about this in the morning, and I was like, oh my god, I have to be there at 8 in the morning, I'm never even awake at 8 in the morning, and what am I going to do, and it's already 1.30, and you're not going to get enough sleep, and that. What is the actual functioning of all those swirling things in your head? Um, so one thing that they used was free writing, um, was just, if you're an artist, just like, you know, stream of consciousness, get it out, get the words out. Um, I do, uh, with some of my students, I, um, I have the older ones, I help them get into, I do a college prep class for the kids who want to go and do some sort of performing arts things in college. And a big part of, if you ever applied to performing arts college is an essay, and the essays usually have extra essays on top of just the regular collegiate essays. And one of the first things I do is just get them, I was like, we are so conditioned, and especially the next generation, to get it right, that we have to like make the, we, we, we're already putting like that left side of our brain in editing as we're writing and you're not, I was like, you're not gonna get the good content, you're not gonna get the good stuff out unless you just let it come out. Um, so free, uh, free writing, um, automatism, if they were artists, they would just let the paintbrush go. Um, one of the slides later as the background, I used one of the first automatism writings and they just took a paintbrush and wherever the spirit led them, that's what happened and it was to unlock that deeper part of themselves and stop getting, stop getting in their own way. So that's what I invite us to think about today is like, how are you getting in your own way? What are you stopping and what are you blocking in your creativity, in your art, and whatever your art means to you? You know, you don't have to literally be a visual artist to do that. Um, so what are some, I said this would be interactive. Does anybody have other things that you use? Yoga, like what are some things that you guys do to try to get out of your way and get out of your own head? Anybody? Cook, oh my gosh, come cook for me. I love that, yes. <laughs> Food, food just makes everything better. Um, anything else? Yeah, yes? Um, I try to add water or sleep, so bath or a nap uh, help. Absolutely, yeah, oh my gosh, a nice bath, yes. Uh, nature, just getting out in nature. Yeah, just reminding ourselves that like there's nothing like there's more than just all the things that we make, that like there's so much good already there that we just need to go experience. Yes, somebody? Reading, great, yes, yeah. Anybody else? So using the things, what can you dig in and just release and let something, give yourself permission. Give yourself permission and the freedom to access things on your own that you might be putting away that don't the, the things that seem wrong, the things that seem like they don't, they don't fit, embrace them. What is the thing that you need to do to open yourself up and give more to yourself and more to the world? They were very much influenced by Freud. Um, and one of the big things that he talked about in dream analysis was like uncovering anxieties, that your dreams are like meant to, they're showing you your deep-seated fears. Um, one of, in our show, that uh, uh, Those Who Lie Beyond that we did with, at Factory Obscura, one of the, um, uh, as we were discussing the themes that the artists had sort of created and how we were responding to the art, and again, using these same ideas of what are we digging down deeper into, um, one of the phrases that we came up with that was sort of like one of the, uh, the, the posts of our show, one of the foundational pillars um, was what holds you back? What is the thing that's holding you back? And uh, the journey of our protagonists in the show, that's what they were discovering. Um, and they, they had different things, those characters that were holding them back from moving forward. So I invite us to think about like, what is the thing that you feel like is holding you back? Um, we used um, some free writing techniques when we were creating the show. Um, some of our actors would, um, just as we would discuss the, the, um, the themes of the show, just we had like, I was like, just write and send it in and we'll share it with each other. And the, you know, long run on sentences that were just tangential, but some of those actually we ended up using as like literal lines from the show that characters said, which we wouldn't have gotten if we were like, okay, well, let's sit down and write the script. Like we wouldn't have gotten those gems of some of those deeper meanings if we had just done that. Um, so moving forward um, from that and into today, 
uh, maybe you don't have some deep unconscious desire to, you know, kill your mother or whatever the Freud stuff they talked about. I'm not saying we have to do that, but what are you, um, maybe it's about like our, per our perception versus our reality. Um, a lot of times what we think someone is thinking about us or um, what the situation is at work that feels really tense or something, sometimes that isn't actually it at all. And we're getting in our own way of like forcing what we are feeling and our perceptions onto the situation and onto the reality of that. Um, there are a lot of times that I know I just can fall into like the thought spiral of my own head and just fall down that rabbit hole of like, okay, well, if this happens then this is gonna happen and then they're clearly gonna say that like, now as I'm, we're moving on in my company to the next steps, it's like, okay, well, I'm not even gonna approach that person for help stuff because like they're so busy, there's, there's, they don't have time for this, I don't wanna bother them. Um, or what are the, uh, I, I won't even like ask for the rights for that show because I think it's the, my idea for it is too radical. They're not gonna they're not gonna allow me. They're not gonna let me do the, make the changes that I want to make. So I am keeping myself back by those those um, fears that are holding me back. Um, so we're using that to sort of um, take surrealism but update it for yourself. So like I said, maybe you don't want to like cut up your father and eat him, but like you are finding like, what is the form um, moving forward? So like change the content, but keep the form. So dig down deep and find some of those things. And what is surrealism? Um, how has that influenced our art of today? If you're a graphic designer, what, um, and you're making an ad for the Gazette, I keep talking like Tiffany Lynn McKnight is here because my friend from Factory Obscura, but I love her work and the things that she does. If you're, um, I don't know, what else do you guys do? What are there are creative people here Dancers, actors, singers, that's what I think of because that's what I do, but there are other creatives. What else do you guys do? Web design. How can you make something unexpected and something that seems like, I don't know if the client, they're not going to like this, like uh, this might be a little too far out there. And maybe they won't, maybe there's, but by showing them that new opportunity and the new option, they can be like, oh my gosh, I never would have thought of this and this is great. What else? Event, uh, event planning. Yes, like a new, exciting, like, I don't know, you thought that you wanted an ice sculpture and I'm going to give you a weird performer doing weird dance moves in the corner. We haven't seen any of that today. Um, what else? <laughs> Somebody else said something in the back. No? Yeah, what can you do that is going to surprise your audience but also surprise yourself? Um, there's a show that is on FX or FXX right now. How many? Like, there's so many networks. Um, that uh, is called Man Seeking Woman. And this is a, just a little short clip that I wanted to show, but I thought was really funny of taking these things that seem not to go well together, but are really hitting home a point. And we'll talk about like the points to hit home soon. Okay, it says it's gonna play on its own. That's what I was told. And if it doesn't, then I'm supposed to hit escape. And then I'm gonna hit it again. Aha, there we go, it wins.
things that might seem a little unexpected but can reveal something deeper that like really hit home for a single guy too. I was like, oh, I should have started about four years ago on this magic life I want. Um, so uh, something that, again, can might feel a little bit crazy but can really reveal something funny um, and poignant and deep. Um, uh, I talked, we said we'd come back to the Melty Clocks. Uh, Salvador Dali, this is one of the quotes that uh, he was um, talking about during this time, is that there's only one difference between a madman and me. I am not mad. Um, so we all have that like spark of madness deep within us and it's how do you choose to channel it? And what is madness? Like are you gonna take something um, and use it for to you know hurt people or you know use it in a way that isn't gonna be productive or healthy? Or can you use the element of surprise How can you take the element of surprise and use it for your benefit? Um, how can you surprise yourself? How can you surprise your audience? Um, and what is the thing that's getting in the way of that? Um, but always going back a little bit deeper and finding out why. Like, why are you using the surprise? Is it just to show off? Like, look at my amazing skills. It's, you know, a total self-artistic thing that has no value for anybody else. I'm not saying that can't be useful. Maybe it's useful for you. But also, like, is it, are you, are you allowing the surprise to be in service of the piece, whatever the piece is? Uh, the event planning, the web design, the graphic design, the performance. So, so I, uh, probably most of you have heard of like the Simon Sinek start with why, but that's always really impactful to me. It's like, okay, if I'm really, I've uncovered these things that are like deeper thoughts and desires and um, wishes and intentions that I have, what is the, um, why? Why does it serve this piece? When we were creating our show, we had a lot of, I will just turn it and maybe it'll find a new, there it is. Um, what we were create when we were creating our piece, there were a lot of really, really wonderful ideas that the company came up with as we were creating it that had to fall by the wayside because they didn't serve the ultimate like final arc and the final vision. It doesn't mean that they weren't worthwhile and they weren't worth exploring. Um, I don't feel that, that time was wasted on our rehearsal by exploring some of those pathways, but even though we ended up not using it, that still informed and maybe we took one word of that and put it into the whole thing. Um, so it really all to me sort of comes down to fear. And going back to our show, like what holds you back? What is the thing that you're keeping inside that you're not sharing? What deep down is that part of you or part of your artistry or the thing that you think people are going to reject? Reject. Um, I think a lot of us are afraid of co our content because we haven't put it into context. But you have to expose that and let it see the light of day in order to find the context. And maybe you'll realize that it doesn't have the context in this situation, but it's something you can use later. Or, um, or it is, it's the perfect thing, and I, you never would have known to put it here in this piece, in this work, if you hadn't given yourself the permission. And I think we need to give ourselves permission to do more and to be more, or sometimes to do less. And to be less, maybe that's the permission you need is to like just take a breath and know that what you have to offer is enough and not stress about it and not be like me at 1.30 in the morning and it's like, okay, this thing could go terribly wrong and they're gonna hate it and blah, 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 blah. Or just give myself permission to take a breath and share what I have. And I think we also need to give others permission. Um, there's a lot of um, internet anger right now where we're all just sort of mad at each other, sometimes for very valid reasons, but sometimes for not valid reasons, and there's so much othering in the world, and I think if we can find ways to give others permission as well to be expressing whatever's deep inside them, that maybe we can then figure out ways to come together. Um, so just sort of the theme of all this, this surreal, like, do you care what other people think, and why? Why do you care what other people think, and is it worth it? Is it worth holding back what you have to offer um, to, not, to not share it with the world? And maybe your thing that feels so weird on your own and doesn't seem to fit, and, but by exposing it and bringing it out, you then are able to share it and to have more. Um, are you doing something interesting and really sharing what you have to offer with the world? Or are you trying to like limit it down to like mass appeal? for people and limit what you have to offer because you think, oh, they're not gonna want it, they're not gonna like this, they're not gonna have, they're not gonna want what I have to say, they're not gonna do any of it. Um, 
So I think we all just need to find the opportunities to get out of our comfort zone and figure out what those parts of us that we have um, that we're holding back. So we're gonna all get out of our comfort zone right now and I'm gonna invite you to stand up and we're gonna go for a walk because I do immersive theater and so we're gonna be immersive and I'm not even kidding, stand up. Set your stuff down and let's go take a look at this beautiful gallery. Come with me, we're gonna walk behind this wall. And as you're walking, I invite you to think about what like, you know, okay, we're just walking around, but like let's physicalize, let's, we're physicalizing the ideas and the stuff and getting outside of our comfort zone. Um, so hopefully, oh, I don't think we're gonna, oh, it, maybe it'll work, we'll find out. Look at these awesome printing presses back here. Hopefully if you didn't explore this before the, before the show, you can. I don't know if it's gonna reach, so I'm just gonna talk louder now. Um, Sometimes we just like need to take a breath and take a moment and experience what's around us. That's how people. You can come this way too if you want to like bend around this way. We'll just come back around. So just take a breath in and think about what's around you. Maybe there's something here to inspire you. Maybe there's a person here. Hopefully you're standing, maybe you're standing near or next to someone that you've never met before. And yeah, we'll do it. We'll all be really uncomfortable. I'm gonna say hi to somebody that I've never met before and I'm just gonna look at them and say, hi, I'm Ron. And we'll just shake hands, but let's, let's hold, hold hands a little longer than you would and just like be with that person for a second. It, it, thank you, thank you so much. Maybe, maybe this is the relationship that you needed to meet today. Maybe this is the new person that could uncover something for you that you didn't even know that you needed to meet. Because it's through collaboration, and that's the whole point of Creative Mornings, is through collaboration, that's how we get to come together and create these seeds that are gonna change. Let's come back to your seats now as we make our way back. But we have one more little bit. So what's the point of all this? What's the point of getting all of this together and if you're doing weird things on your own, how is that, how does it seem like you're just living in your own thought spiral, in your own bubble, and falling down and falling down this rabbit hole of thought, but what you really needed to do was collaborate and find a new person to work with. And maybe the thing, the piece that you have on your own that doesn't work by itself, when you meet the right person, that's how it's going to fit together. And the thing that didn't work on your own suddenly works when you find the right person and it makes everything fall into place. And simply by the act of looking and looking within yourself and opening yourself up to looking at others can sometimes take whatever you have to offer and build upon that. And that's the inspiration and the spark that you needed. That juxtaposition of things that seem not to fit is the spark that you needed to make everything work and go together on your own. Okay, you can come back and sit down. So we have an opportunity here with Creative Mornings to make new relationships and to find new people that might, be the that might be the thing that we need to spur us forward. And there's so much, I know I hate being in new situations and meeting new people and I go up and I'll say hi to one person. I'm like, okay, I did my thing and I'm gonna leave now and go back to the comfort of Netflix on the couch. But 
Hey. Nice to meet you. It's so nice to meet you. Thank you so much for being here. But simply by opening yourself up to the environment around you, to the people around you, to the thoughts inside yourself, and letting your true inner self rise to the surface and showing that vulnerability. Uh, Brene Brown, I know a lot of you probably know, she has this whole speech and TED talk and book probably and all these wonderful things about vulner vulnerability and bravery and how hard that can be. But that's where the true magic happens is when you are letting your true inner self rise to the surface. And uh, let's use the guideposts of surrealism to bring ourselves a little bit more forward in 2019 and see if we can spark something new within yourself and with others and therefore those small relationships and seeds of change can start to change the world around us. Thank you guys so much for having me today and thank you to my dancers. Um, I think that I, because I grew up here, well, I grew up in like Ada, like an even tinier town. So coming to the city, which on the East Coast means New York City, and now, as we all know here, this means Oklahoma City. Um, in the time I was away after I went to college and moved away and come back and forth, like the growth and the, um, the bravery that the city is starting to show in all sorts of things in our food culture, like there were no, or if there were, I didn't know about them, but there were no like, Korean taco restaurants around, you know, like the fact it's like you ate meat and potatoes and like that is all that it was. And like the, so bravery in something as simple as like the food culture, I think is changing here. Um, and I think our, our openness to um, exposing ourselves to ourselves to new ideas and new people has opened up this city a lot and it's showing in the economic development and things. Um, so I think that's something that I've obviously noticed when you have 8 million people living in New York City, there's gonna be people who are different than you and the growth that comes from just walking down the street with someone um, who grew up in a totally different part of the world than you did, um, that openness sparks something and sparks a lot of creativity in New York, but I'm seeing that happening here now. Um, when I, uh, I, my grandmother has some health issues, which is the main reason that brought me back here more often. Um, and you know, the, when you're in your twenties and like, oh, my career's over, like I'm coming back to Oklahoma, what am I gonna do here? Well, what I'm doing here is like starting my own company and like I would never have been able to do that financially in New York City because I worried about like how to pay rent and can I afford the extra guac at Chipotle? No, so let's, <laughs> They can't. So how am I going to start a company, right? So I think there's so many amazing opportunities that Oklahoma City has to offer um, economically and financially, and now we're starting to find those collaborators and the people too. I know we have to go. There's lots of stuff, but yes, hopefully that answers your question. We have some fun stuff in the works. Um, we are uh, looking at doing um, classic titles that you all know very well uh, for in the theater um, and also some film and doing them in new immersive ways. So we're in talks right now. We have the rights to our next show. We're still in talks with the venue to present it, but um, it's a song we all know very well and hold near and dear to our hearts for our state. And so hopefully you'll be seeing a fun, exciting production um, or you can like get your boots on the ground soon. <laughs> <laughs>